Hi, this is Bitluni and today we take a look at a simple solar setup that helps saving on utility costs and do good for the environment. I recently got a good deal on 300 watt panels. For 100 euros per panel I couldn't say no and bought two pieces to make a video for you on that topic. Only a few years ago I paid that much for only 100 watts. The question is why would you care? Solar panels are inconvenient since all your stuff is powered by AC voltage from the outlet and you don't want to switch to batteries when the sun is gone or lay some awkward power lines. Good news is the solar tech has advanced rapidly in the past years addressing these issues and these affordable microinverters showed up. I got this one for about 150 bucks. These are designed to feed the solar power directly from the panel into your AC power line. They match the phase and frequency of the power line automatically. This means you can still use your outlets and as much power as is available comes from your rooftop, balcony or garden. If you need more power than the solar cells can provide, the rest is taken from the grid. That's cool. Ok, there is also the first catch. Typically you are not allowed to feed back to the grid. There are some regulations. Here in Germany you need a smart meter, specific contracts and whatnot. The least households have this already. At least the house where I am living has this old meter that is not suitable to feed back to the grid. But the good news are you are allowed to produce electricity for yourself as long as you ensure it doesn't exceed your consumption at any moment. This means since you have always appliances running like your fridge or the flex capacitor you have always a consumption of a few hundred watts and this can be easily compensated with one of these panels and a microinverter. Since you have to connect it to the AC line this has to be done by a technician which adds to the cost. To monitor my microinverter and the power I produce I also bought this bridge. It shows the currently harvested power and can be connected to the internet to put statistics on the cloud. For 80 bucks I wasn't sure if I could build something like that myself so I simply bought it. The microinverter is usually installed directly at the panel on the roof and is connected to the power line via these waterproof connectors. I got a microinverter that allows to daisy chain them if I decide to add more panels to my system. But it seems it's simply connected through, so all microinverters are put in parallel to the AC line. For testing I will use a fitting connector and a simple power cord to plug it to the outlet. Messing with mains power is dangerous, so don't try this at home, but I was only electrocuted once this time. It's also not recommended to simply connect it to a power plug, since you are potentially bypassing your breaker. However this is just a test to see if a proper installation would be feasible. Conveniently the connector indicates where the live, the neutral and the ground wire should be connected. I added some heat shrink to make the cable thick enough for the CO and connected it. Using the multimeter I figured out where the live and the neutral should be. European power plugs can be flipped so it's not assured where the live connection ends up. I have to test it before plugging in in my case. This can be done easily using a phase tester. Just like this. In the afterthought the female connector would be safer to use since it has less exposed contacts. And I also forgot to order the end cap. But duct tape will do for now. Uh, uh. Okay. Done. If you want to use the bridge to track all your microinverters like me, you just need to plug it in. It will communicate with the microinverters over the power line. Therefore it needs to be plugged in to the same phase in a three phase system like here in Germany. Usually the three phases are spread across the house to achieve equal load. You either connect to the same outlet or simply test different ones in your place until it's able to see the inverter. Ooh. <laughs> When you connect the bridge to your network you will be able to bond the serial of the microinverter to the bridge using this simple tool. It will also work without the network connection afterwards. After a short time it displays all the microinverters and the generated power. If the bridge is able to reach the internet over the network connection it will send data to the cloud where you can monitor your achievements. Let's test it outside. It's midsummer and perfect conditions for solar projects. The garage roof is a good place to put the panel on. The microinverter is connected and green blinking indicates that it's running. Let's check the current we get using the clamp meter. This thing is the best. We get around 4 amps at around 10 o'clock in the morning. The bridge is showing 128 watts. 
On the monitoring side we can also see the panel voltage, which seems to be optimal at 30 volts. Let's check around 1 o'clock again. Even it's midsummer, the sun isn't straight up, so I'll give it a slight tilt. We get 7.6 amps. That's 230 watts. It's really hot outside, so I think the efficiency of the panel is lowered. Putting water on the panel rather lowers the current at first. But checking the statistics, it gives a bump of around 10%. I tested it several times, so the hottest days are not necessarily the best for solar. You can see it here, this was the hottest June day ever recorded, yet I got more power the day after without changing the setup. Let's take a look at the meter if we can see an effect with and without the solar power. The rotation speed of that wheel indicates the amount of power consumed. It's not allowed to rotate to the left. Let's turn the microinverter on. Just kidding. 230 watts is really not that much. When it's on, I'm almost able to compensate the complete base load. The meter counts the average of all three phases. So it doesn't matter to which phase the microinverter is connected. You can clearly see the difference when I turn off the microinverter. That's awesome. I'm going to be well off now. Okay, let me rectify your expectations a bit. At these best days of the year, I was able to harvest good 2 kilowatt hours per day. That's at 30 euro cents per kilowatt hour, 60 cents a day. Okay, that seems disappointing, but if you consider that it's running 365 days a year on its own, that sums up. Online calculators help to figure out how much you can harvest a year and how long it takes for the installation to pay off. I got 2 kilowatt hours a day with this good weather. The average in June seems to be 1.2 kilowatt hours here. So the installation will pay off after 5 years. Every cent of the 15 years additional lifetime after that will go directly into my pocket. <laughs> I linked all the stuff I bought in the links below. Next steps would be to build a properly grounded mount and let the technician check the installation. Consider subscribing to keep being updated on that and ring the bell to not miss anything. You can also support my endeavors with a channel membership or on Patreon. I hope you found that informative and I see you next time. Bye! So you are still here and curious what's inside the inverter. Let's take a look. Okay, what did I expect? At least it's waterproof. <laughs>